welcome you to today's webinar about freeze drying of organic samples. Uh, my name is Marco Muri. I'm the business area manager formulation in the headquarters of Switzerland. And this means that me and my team were responsible for freeze drying, spray drying, and microencapsulation with Büchi. Now, today I would like to talk with you about freeze drying of organic solvents, a topic that is getting trendy and more important. So, in the past, freeze drying was all about just removing water, but in our days, removing organic solvents becomes more important as well. So, where do these solvents come from that need to be? Um, freeze dried parts of them are coming for example from reversed phase chromatography where often a mixture of a set to nitrile and water needs to be removed from a sample and i mean question is often why do you not just remove the organic solvents by evaporation for example with a rotary evaporator but this is often not possible because the material is too sensitive does not allow to use any method that that applies a lot of energy or heat to the system or further it is just much more convenient to remove the solvent in one process step instead of two process steps so that's why we are facing more and more demand in freeze drying of organic solvents and today i would like to explain you how does it work? What is important? What kind of machinery do you need for this process? So what makes freeze drying of organic solvents special? We are using something else than water. Freeze drying usually was used or traditionally was used to remove water. Water has a triple point of zero degrees and 6.1 millibar. But now we would like to remove other materials as well. For example, acetonitrile, acetone, methanol, ethanol. Now they have much lower melting or triple points. Acetonitrile, for example, minus 43.9 degrees. They also behave different than water when it comes to the vapor pressure. So they don't show the same temperature at the same pressure as water does. Typically, they need much lower temperatures than water to achieve the temperatures they need to remain solid. But some of them are also using very usual pressures for freeze drying. But now what are the questions we need to ask ourselves when we are trying to freeze dry organic salt? First, how can the solvent be frozen? Can we reach a low enough temperature to get the sample really frozen? And also what is happening if, if the solvent is not frozen, if we cannot achieve such a low temperature? Is the concentration of the solvent right for freeze drying? Can we change the concentration? Can we dilute the solvent or can we remove parts of the solvent by another method to help us getting better freeze drying results. Can the solvent be collected in the condenser of the freeze dryer? And what is happening if it cannot be collected? We typically need a difference between sample temperature and condenser temperature of about 15 to 20 degrees. But in many cases, we cannot achieve that. How can we solve this? How, how is this done? And then also very very important, will the sample remain in a frozen state during the process or will it start to melt? Can we maintain a pressure that is low enough to the sample to stay frozen? And what is happening if the sample should melt? Is it a problem? Is it no problem? All these questions I will try to answer for you on the following slides. First, freezing. For freezing, you have multiple options. You can use freezers, typical freezers but you will need low temperatures minus 40 degrees or even minus 80 degrees depending on the material you are using what we are recommending for flasks is to freeze in a cold bath of ethanol or acetone with dry ice with that you will achieve temperature of about minus 75 degrees on the right hand side you can see a picture 
of such a cooling bath in combination with a bushy rotary evaporator where you can freeze your samples together with dry ice and ethanol or acetone. And if this should not be cold enough, then you always have the option of liquid nitrogen. However, if you freeze your sample in flasks, we always recommend you to do this rotationally. Why rotationally? Because when you have a rotation, you will coat the inner wall of your flask with your sample, and this will create a much bigger surface of your sample, and this will lead to a much shorter drying time. If you look at the graph on the bottom, the blue dots are a sample that was simply frozen in a freezer, so basically in bulk. And the red or orange squares are a showing a sample that has been frozen rotational. And then you can see the time and the sublimation rate. And what you can see is that the rotational frozen sample dries about at least twice as fast as the sample that just has been frozen in a freezer. So it will really make your process quicker if you freeze your sample rotationally. But what's also important for freeze drying of organic solvents is that you freeze your sample to low enough temperatures. Now, which solvents can be used for freeze drying organic solvents? What we did is we named the most important organic solvents in your use, and we show you also the concentration in which those can be used in a freeze dryer. Now you see water, acetic acid, acetone, acetonitrile, DMSO, ethanol, IPA, methanol, TFA, and also tertiary butanol one side. The table on the left is for our Lyo Vapor L200, so a minus 55 degrees instrument with six kilograms of capacity. And the right hand side table is for our Lyo Vapor L300, a minus 105 condenser with an endless capacity due to infinite technology. Now, both of them can handle certain organic solvents with a certain concentration. If you look at the colors in the table, what does it mean? Green means yes, you can use this solvent at this concentration and the freeze drying process will work and the sample will remain frozen. Yellow means yes, you can use this uh, solvent in that concentration for freeze drying, but the solvent will melt during the process and the water part will remain frozen. Now this means that your sample might see some collapse. So it's really up to where you use your material afterwards, if this is an option or not. If you just use it for drying as an intermediate process of synthesis or biotechnology or whatever, then you might be fine with the solvent melting during the process. If you use it uh, in vials, in pharmaceuticals as a production process, you will not be okay if the sample is melting during process. And then you have the gray areas and the gray areas will not work. Why will they not work? Because the solvent will melt, and it will create as much vapor in the system that the system will no longer be able to hold the pressure that you need. And finally, you will see the freeze drying process coming to a complete end. This will happen with all your freeze drying brands out there. This is a simple basic of physics in the freeze drying process. So with this table, you can see what you can do. And you can see, for example, even with the minus 55 machine L200, you can do up to 30% of acetonitrile in a completely frozen state or up to 50% in a partly melting state. You can remove all this perfectly from your flask. With an L300 that has a lower temperature, for example, in acetonitrile, you can go as high as 100% acetonitrile. 
Other solvents are a bit more critical, more difficult, like acetone, ethanol, IPA. With ethanol, IPA, acetone, you will never achieve a frozen state. It will always be that the solvent part is evaporating from the flask and the water part will remain frozen and will afterwards sublimate from the flask. Now, when you choose an organic solvent that cannot, that has a such low uh, melting point that it cannot be trapped in a freeze dryer, so not cannot be trapped in a minus 55, but can also not be trapped in a minus 105, then you will need a special pump. So with the L300, we have minus 105 degrees condenser temperature. But even for some solvents, this is not enough. And that's why the L300 is coming with a so-called scroll pump. The scroll pump is resistant to organic solvents, which is a big difference from what you may know, uh, the rotary weight pumps or the oil pumps that are usually used with freeze dry. But since this pump is not sensitive to solvents or water, the solvents that are not collected in the condenser can simply be pumped through the system and the fumes can be directed into the fume hood. So like that, you can freeze dry all those organic solvents we saw before in this table without your process ending because there's too much solvent vapor in the system. So the solvent vapor will simply leave the system. The same you can do with the L200, which is a minus 55, 6 kilogram system. If you hook it up with a scroll pump, it can handle a lot of organic solvents already, even though it is a minus 55 system. So it can handle acetonitrile up to 50%. It can handle certain concentrations of ethanol, methanol, IPA, just under the condition that the solvent will melt. But this will happen with any freeze dryer you use to freeze dry those organic solvents. So if freeze drying of organic solvents is a hot topic for you, I hope this webinar has been interesting for you. If you have more questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're very happy to help you uh, finding the right machine and the right conditions to handle your organic solvent freeze dry. Now I wish you a lovely day. Thank you again for your attention and all the best.